In Acts chapter 2, well, it's one of the most amazing chapters in the book of Acts. It's literally the birth of the church. The disciples have been waiting in the upper room. Jesus had promised to send the Holy Spirit, and it happens. And amazing things occur. They're speaking in tongues. People are trying to figure out what's going on. Some say they're drunk. And Peter stands up and gives this powerful message about the risen Savior. And that day, at that time, in that place, 3,000 people are saved. And they're baptized. And the church, well, it begins. And we're told that instead of them all going back, see, they were all there for the Feast of Festivals. Instead of returning back all these Jews to where they had come from, they stayed in Jerusalem. And listen to what the scripture says, Acts chapter 2. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, and in the breaking of bread. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. They sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all. It was kind of a communal type living. Not that that's to continue, but in that day, in that time, there was no real legacy or discipleship going on. So they stayed and the 12 had to, well, the 11, I guess, because Judas was gone, had to disciple these people who knew really hardly anything about Jesus. So day of Pentecost, 3,000 saved continuing in the doctrine, going from house to house, taking communion together, and being discipled as they took care of one another's needs. And God was beginning to build his church because that's what Jesus said he would do. And on the day of Pentecost, it began. Jesus began to build his church. And to this day, as Jesus promised, the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. Acts chapter two, the birth of the church, the outpouring of the Spirit, and it's still going on today.